I strove, what, what I was striving for was actually money. Uh, I was athletic. You know, I had dreams of being a pro baseball player. And I grew up in a neighborhood with, that uh, mob says it was prevalent. So everybody I knew was uh, either involved with the mob or had family members that were made guys in the mob. And so it was an exposure that uh, in the back of my mind, uh, I always uh, looked up to it. Similar to what you're saying, it was uh, glamorized. And, uh, you know, the fantasy of seeing all that money and, and watching guys drive cars, I wanted that stuff. And as things got difficult in my life, I went in that direction. Um, but it's not what everybody thinks it is. So, uh, you know, I, that's why I'm sitting here today to, to send that message. It's not glamorized. When I was a younger kid, I was got involved with just uh, minor things while I was at work. I used to work in a, in a, in a delicatessen. And that delicatessen also had bookmakers next door, and they used to use the, the payphone in the back room. And uh, one of the bookmakers' uh, nieces was a girlfriend of mine as we were kids. So I was familiar with them, and he'd ask me favors to run some slips over to him when I was at work. So I'd run it over in the envelopes. And my bosses at that time were uh, gamblers themselves, so they didn't have a problem with it. They were kind of involved themselves in a, on a very small scale. So... Uh, I, I started hanging out and uh, doing little errands, and uh, when things didn't work out later on in life, as a, a ball player, I had an arm injury. I went back to the street. Yeah, we were introduced to each other through some mutual friends a couple of occasions. Uh, we really weren't buddies. We just knew each other, hello, goodbye. And I met him another occasion with uh, Fat Andy Ruggiano's son, Albert, who was uh, one of the guys involved with me at a gym that we used to box at. He was a couple of years old and my baseball coach. and. Uh, he introduced me another time with John Gotti Jr., but he didn't care for me. Uh, initially, we, you know, when we first met, we was part of the job kind of thing. Then, like anything else, uh, when you spend a lot of time with somebody, you, you get friendly with them. And we started having a, you know, a pretty good friendship, I'd say. And then, like anything else, you, you have a good time. It's about business, about money is the bottom line, really. I don't think one made me question uh, what I was doing, but when I was sitting in jail cells, I would reminisce back and say, what happened to that good kid? And, uh, you know, went to college and uh, studied. I was a ball player. I was the captain of my high school baseball team for two years. I played four years varsity. And I, I wondered what happened to that good kid. You know, I was really a good kid. Uh, went to a, got a stock right, broke his license in Series 7. And, uh, and I started saying to myself, how did I go wrong? And why did I do what I did? And I started really questioning myself and saying, I wish I could take it back and go back, especially when you're sitting in those cells and you're saying, you know, you cause a lot of pain for a lot of families. And at the time, you're justifying it and you're blind to the money and uh, cause a lot of pain for your own family and obviously for yourself. Started going downhill around 92, I'd say. Uh, when 91, uh, Bobby Boriello gets killed. He was the uh, best man at John Gotti Jr.'s wedding. And uh, the three of us were together on a, a constant basis. And uh, he was killed uh, because of the retribution with the uh, Castellano hit. And uh, John uh, badmouthed him to me. At uh, the hospital when my son was born, it was July 18th, I believe, the day after he was born, we had a conversation about Bobby Borrello out in front of the hospital. And instead of talking highly of our friend, he started knocking him. And uh, you know, we, that was probably the beginning of uh, some issues that, that kept the current. Well, it was other issues prior that uh, I started to understand that uh, I'm just another guy that does work for them and earns money. Bobby Borrell was Italian. He was a made guy. He was a loyal guy to that family. Uh, Mark Ryder was a Jewish guy that made millions for the family, and his son was killed. And uh, no one cared. You know, they, when his money wasn't there anymore, and he, as long as he didn't give up uh, Gotti Sr., and as long as uh, his son died while he was in prison, nobody helped him. Nobody tried to find out who killed him, and when they eventually did find out who, who killed his son, they didn't do anything about it. So, uh, you know, I understood the life at this time. I'm a little older, and I understand the Gottis, and I understand them all. Well, uh, well I was mad at him. Uh, I was very angry. He put a message out on the street that I was uh, a cooperator and I was a rat. And, 
uh, I was in prison fighting for my life in uh, Brazilian penitentiaries. And uh, I got a message that uh, John Gotti Jr. through an attorney, Joseph Carrazzo, whose uh, uncle was an acting boss for our family, Nikki, and his father was a concierge of the family. And they sent me a message that uh, John Gotti Jr. was riding with the government and that he was uh, walking in on a sneak and he uh, took what they call a proffer and queen of the day where he gives up uh, people and uh, can't be charged with anything he talks about that day. Yeah, well, while I'm in the Brazilian penitentiaries, so I'm, I'm making phone calls back because uh, my co-defendants are on trial in, in Tampa, Florida, and I'm trying to help them beat the case. And I'm speaking to Carrazzo, the attorney, and uh, he gives me information that uh, John Gotti Jr., uh, I told him to speak to him about helping them beat the case, that he's a cooperator, he tells me. And I says, are you kidding me? I says, and he says, yeah, I'm going to send you the information. We got it from an attorney, uh, Charlie Canese, who gave it to a client prior to him. His name is Danny Marino, who's also a made guy in our family. Uh, Danny Marino took that uh, 302 when he got his hands on it from Charlie Canese, and he brought it to our administration, which was uh, the Carrazzo uh, brothers, concierge and acting bosses. I don't know how much he knows is out yet because in George Anastasia's book, he places the uh, front page of his 302 uh, proffer uh, Queen of the Day where he rats in the, in the book with his signature on it, his attorneys, uh, the prosecutors, and uh, we have the paperwork. That, uh, so it's not something he could dispute. And uh, I don't know how much he's aware of what we exactly have yet. And uh, that the public will have shortly that he got on 60 Minutes. And it will show you his credibility. Three times, called me a miscreant, called me some names. And, uh, you know, I used to be real angry at him. What I am is uh, angry at his message. Not about me personally. About, listen, the, the mafia is done for me. It's done for him. Let's pass a message to these kids. Uh, he suffered as I suffered in different ways. I don't really care what he did that he cooperated. It, 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 at this point, at one time I did. He actually did me a favor. So I'm, I'm finished with the life. Uh, so he has his own issues and his own camp of where that paperwork actually came from. So I guess uh, when he finds out, uh, he'll have to have that discussion with his attorney about uh, him giving that paperwork out on him because uh, he has no knowledge of that yet. At the time, I was like uh, uh, any a young kid. We believed in all that small print of loyalty and camaraderie and sharing wealth, and it doesn't exist. Uh, now that I'm home and I'm living a right life, uh, I have that loyalty again. I speak to my old friends I grew up with since we were kids, uh, and I stay with uh, everyday, regular, hardworking people and gentlemen. I uh, choose my friends uh, correctly now at an older age, so I, I understand life a little more. and. Uh, and I'm trying to do the right thing and, and live the right life with the right guys. So, yeah, the loyalty is in a, is in a different direction these days and aspect of life. So, you know, I had an exciting life. I can't say I didn't, but I had pain that you can't imagine. And John Gotti Jr. also and his family suffered that same pain. That's why I don't understand this message that he's trying to project, uh, you know, portray in his, uh, you know, in his message to people and this new book that he's writing about his father and he's glamorizing. Uh, the life and uh, as if his father was a king of a country that, you know, he could love his dad and, and he should. And his dad loved him and his, his kids could love their grandfather. But they need to pass that message out that he lived a life that was garbage. He was a monster on the street. Uh, he ordered a lot of hits. Uh, I was a bad guy on the street. John Jr. was a bad guy on the street. And uh, he didn't quit the mafia like he tried to portray. He was thrown out of the mafia when this document came in, and he was shelved, is what we call. And he's not a mobster anymore. He used that as a defense in 99, I guess, that he quit the mafia. It doesn't exist. It's, it's not true. And uh, later on, he got caught in, in, in on, on a tape, angry at his uncle that broke him down from acting boss to a skipper, which is a captain. And uh, if you quit the mafia in 99, what would you be mad at your uncle for breaking you down to a skipper for? So it's ridiculous. But in 2005, they shelf him. Why they don't kill him, I have no idea. 
if I was him, I'd be a little paranoid on the street. Maybe there was all this media attention, uh, but he's in a dangerous position for you know some of the things he did. They did a, a, a two-day series out of uh, England with Trevor McDonald, great guy, great interviewist. Uh, he was the first person that interviewed Mandela. Uh, and those are the guys that we need to tell the kids to respect. Uh, you know, a guy like Mandela, a president of a country, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., uh, people that were real heroes, took, uh, lost his life for, for, this, for his cause, Martin Luther King Jr., in a, in a good way, not in a violent way. Uh, this guy that he's trying to pre pre portray as one of these kind of people, his dad, I'm sorry, he's not. He's just a bad guy. But he was his father, and that's okay. You can be entitled to love your dad. But just keep that in perspective, and you know. And I'm trying to send a different message than him. And I'm not knocking him. So I know a lot of the media thinks I knock him, and he knocks me. I know he does knock me. It doesn't. I don't. I don't really pay any attention, any credence to what he talks about or says. I just want to be honest and, and help kids. Uh, my two sons. I have a great relationship. One is he's 18. The other one's 23. They they both work real hard. Go to school. Uh, my daughter I reunited with, and uh, we have a fantastic relationship. She works for an attorney, and uh, we're very close now. And, uh, it's, I, you know, it's my baby, my daughter, so uh, she's always going to be my little girl. And so that's how I look at it. I mean, it was that's some of the things that these uh, other kids need to see. This is, uh, you know, when you lose contact with your family. And uh, my one son uh, will get some things to go through in trials, and, uh, it's a, it's a, a rocky uh, relationship, and I'm hoping that it gets better. That's my oldest son. I mean, this is something I feel like everyone's going to want to touch upon before we end. You don't have to answer it, but uh, what happened with uh, with Vicky? You know, it's it, to me. I yeah, you know, I won't answer that. It's it's not relevant. You know, I, I was talking about the mob, and and I keep it to that. I don't want to talk about anybody personally. I don't have any hard feelings towards. Uh, her or anybody in his family, so uh, it's 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 not part of the message that I want to send out. And uh, you know, I want to be relevant as far as helping kids. I did some things that uh, uh, I'm ashamed of and uh, wish I could take back. I can't. The only thing I do is uh, move forward and try to help some kids, and I'm hoping to do that. And I'm hoping to uh, make money the right way, and break into you know this movie business. And I got a consultant job coming up in a couple of months, and. Uh, Hopefully uh, I can get on that path and make a difference in, in a couple of different areas.